Good afternoon Ananda. So, today we are going to um, see about thermal processing equipment. What are all the uh, different equipments used for thermal processing of food? The outline goes like this uh, in container sterilizers and pasteurizers. Already we have seen uh, the two major thermal processing uh, which happens in the food industries either pasteurization and the sterilization. And the second one is continuous flow processing equipment. The first one batch process, the second one continuous flow processing equipment. So, to introduce um, in the canned food, uh, it is uh, usually done using uh, retards, which is nothing but a batch process, or we call it as a sterilizer as well. And uh, normally, the pasteurization of liquid foods happens on the continuous flow pasteurizers and aseptic processing so which we have already uh, introduced that uh, both food and can is uh, separately sterilized so aseptic processing uses continuous flow sterilizers actually um, when you use either the batch process or continuous process so we need to be very strict about the public health requirements uh, because the cleaning of equipments and the uh, equipments used, the perms, uh, walls and uh, bleeders and all the equipment should come under the regulations of federal, state and international. Uh, so, in that aspect, uh, we should maintain strict public health requirements and quality needs of the food products. So, they call it as a good manufacturing practices. So, this should be strictly followed. And also the federal, state and international regulations and directives also the food processor should be uh, maintaining very strictly. And also sometimes uh, for example in the milk pasteurizations, uh, so earlier days the uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis was uh, identified as a uh, most heat resistant microorganisms, but uh, now that that slowly changed and uh, coaxella burnetti is the uh, recent microorganisms. So, the heat resistance of the microorganisms also changes based on the environment and the evolution. So, uh, the supervisors of the operators of canning low acid food, low acid food. So, this is uh, um, uh, low acid food we already seen the pH is uh, something greater than 4.6. So, where uh, this is the favorable condition for the um, uh, seabot to survive. So, uh, the canning low acid food, the operators who handles the canning of low acid food uh, should attend the special better process control schools approved by FDA, which is nothing but a food and drug administration and also NEPA. So, National Food Processes Association. So, they kept on offering the short term courses and uh, better process control strategies then and there um, in the periodically in US universities. So, the supervisors are required to attend uh, such short term courses and get to learn about what are all the best practices then and there. So, uh, in container sterilizers are um, used in the canning industry basically. The canning several food products in a various hermetically sealed containers made of metallic cans. Um, we have already uh, understood that the canning it does not mean that only metallic canning of aluminum or steel. So, it also includes glass and plastic materials. So, um, the in container sterilizers are basically hermetically sealed containers. So, the heating medium used are either saturated steam or steam air mixtures and hot water based on the requirement. For example, if, if I use glass containers that is of thermal conductivity is very less. So, in that case which heating medium to be choose. So, based on certain factors we choose uh, which heating medium to be used and relative motion of the cans and heating uh, medium increases heat. Actually, sometimes we use agitation uh, to increase the heat transfer rate. So, the relative motion of cans and heating medium or cooling medium because the normal process is first heat and hold it for some time then cool it to the normal temperature. So, the um, relative motion between them also increases the heat transfer rate. And nowadays what happens is the automated and equipped with PLC and sequential event controllers. So, uh, to control at a particular temperature and to control or to hold the product set, to hold the cans at particular temperature, nowadays programmable logic controllers are used. 
and also microprocess controllers use product specific software ok. Uh, for example, if I am processing low acid food, so this much temperature to be maintained at particular time. So, this uh, product specific software is used in the microprocessor controllers. So, that automatically takes care um, of the temperature control and time control. Also, the processing programs for a large canned food product. So, this is automatically GUI graphical user interface. First, uh, we, we have to select the particular food product. So, it automatically gives what is the time uh, to be maintained and at which temperature it should be processed. And also, various other units such as washers, mechanical separators, peelers, and can closing machines and packaging equipment. The moment we say uh, thermal processing equipment, it is not only a batch or a continuous pasteurizer or sterilizers. Sometimes in the canned preparation first uh, before going into proper thermal sterilization or pasteurization, there are uh, food handling units in the canning industry. So, th these machines also comes under the category of thermal processing equipment. So, we are going to see one by one. Uh, actually for uh, preparing the vegetables in the can, these are all the process to be used uh, to prepare the um, canned food. Actually, in the canning industry, um, the cleaning operations must be thorough to remove all unwanted material and wash the vegetable. Actually, if we are not uh, removing the unwanted material, for example, it contains the soil, there may be some microorganisms which is thermophilic, which can survive still that uh, heat requirement and it will allow for the further contamination. So, it should be washed and uh, the pre-processed thoroughly before going into the uh, sterilization process. So, for example, carrot and potato kind of food, so what are all the cleaning process uh, available? So, one is dry brushing and soaking to remove the bulk of the dirt followed by washing. So, before going into proper washing, when they uh, take it from the soil, the root contains the bulk of uh, soil material. So, uh, first they, uh, they soak it to remove those dirts, then after that the proper washing will be done. The washing involves wet scrubbing. Uh, with rotary brushes uh, or uh, rubber fingers followed by rinsing in a rod washer. So, uh, this will be tumbled, it will be rotated uh, the machines uh, tumbler. So, here uh, you put the vegetables and the rod will be rotating and also uh, here we employ the water then it, it will be washed thoroughly and um, cylinder made from a steel rods while being washed by water sprays from the inside of the cylinder. So, this is the water spray and this is the rotating element. So, it, it will uh, make the contact between the water and the uh, vegetable uh, properly. So, this is the way uh, cleaning can be done in carrots and potatoes th th those kind of vegetables. If my vegetables are corn or green peas or beans, so first uh, the husking of the corn should be done in case of corn and uh, whining of peas should be done in, in case of green peas and breaking up of clusters of green peas. So, these are all to be done before going for washing and dry cleaning with air blowers and is followed by washing in tanks which removes mud, balls and stones. So, before going into proper washing, how we have done in carrots and potatoes the uh, dry brushing. So, here they do it with dry cleaning with uh, air blowers because when we remove the corn uh, by using husking process, so there may be some vegetable material uh, kept with the corn itself. So, those will be removed using uh, air blowers uh, in terms of dry cleaning. Then after that the proper washing will be done in the uh, tanks which removes muds, balls and stones. And sometimes what they do is froth flotation, so which also removes pieces of vegetable material and sometimes we, we also see the piece which will be very less dense. There would not be any proper inside material, so those also will be washed away with while using froth flotation. The final rinse with water follows the cleaning treatment to remove all the lost stuff. Then, then one time final rinse with the water which removes the um, remaining material which is still there after washing. So, that will be removed in the final rinsing. And spinach are uh, greeny vegetables, these are all examples. So, so this are always uh, applicable for all green leaves. Right, and floating them in the tanks of water where the water is agitated with air or water injection to separate the leaves and remove the soil. So, when they harvest the spinach or any green leaves, so there will be mud uh, associated with that and also uh, there may be some, uh, it is not only the particular green leaves. So, for example, with the spinach there are some unwanted uh, green leaves also will be there. So, those should be sorted it out after the washing. 
right and um, so this is usually uh, it is done with the agitated water so that the um, dirt will be removed from the uh, green leaf vegetables and also it is sorted based on the color and uh, um, uh, size shape and everything for example uh, i already told in the green piece there are some uh, unwanted material which doesn't have that core material right only the skin will would be there so those materials will be removed and the proper green peas or proper uh, spinaches those those will be sorted it out and sometimes electronic sorters also used nowadays and uh, sometimes still air blower also used to sort it out uh, the required or the best ones and uh, still the manual uh, sorter is the best one uh, till date there are some industry which which still uses manual sorters the second operation is peeling the peeling will be done in three ways either by uh, cutting aberration and use of high pressure steam so this is again a thermal processing uh, thermal processing equipment only so that's what i told the preparation method itself uh, the preparation for canning uh, the preparation for sterilization itself a uh, thermal processing or chemical treatment so this is nothing but a um, two carborundum covered rollers would be there so the um, vegetable is put in between the rollers which is in contact with the, the skin of the vegetable uh, so the skin would be removed based on the aberration uh, phenomena but um, after that after the skin is removed the water sprays onto the vegetable that remove the skin properly so that the jets will be of 3 to 7 bars pressure so what happens in the aberration it's uh, is uh, instead of removing skin Uh, there may be some flesh material also goes into that so in that way compared to high pressure stream peeling uh, aberration peeling is uh, less efficient so um, in the high pressure stream peeling what happens is the pressure is suddenly released so the tissue uh, explosively boils and releasing the above the skin all right um, when the steam is impinged on uh, on our skin so what happens the skin will be removed the same phenomena over there as well the tissue explosively boils releasing the skin from the intimate contact with the vegetable so here the uh, amount of flesh uh, which is also removed along with the skin is uh, very less so the typical uh, conditions for steam peeling is 17 atmosphere pressure for about 30 second so this is uh, uh, economical and efficient one compared to aberration and sometimes uh, the chemical treatment which is nothing but a hot lye sodium hydroxide solution is also used to peel the vegetables so when you soak it then the skin will be removed uh, very easily so boiling solution of 10 percentage uh, lye will remove most skins in less than 1 minute for most of the vegetables but uh, the problem here is it should be washed thoroughly because we are using a sodium hydroxide chemical and also the washed water you cannot reuse because that is also contaminated water so in that way this is uh, comparatively less economical than high pressure stream and slicing and dicing will be used to, uh, will be done by slicers and dicers so the cutting operations used to supply the required size of vegetable for canning for example the can sizes are also standardized uh, so there are standard cans um, so this much outer diameter and this much uh, length Mm, so in that case my vegetables or whatever the food i'm going to sterilize also should be of uh, the required size so for that purpose this slicing and dicing can be done and also sometimes it is a attractive piece of canned vegetable so i would like to maybe customer would like to see uh, on particular shape and a particular attractive shape in that case also slicing and dicing is required and uh, also sometimes uh, what happens is like to give uh, superior appearance of a particular shape for example i want it in a rounded shape or i want it in a cubical shape so based on the uh, appearance also the uh, the slicing and dicing will be required and sometimes these they leave it as a irregular shape because uh, in home cutting we would be able to uh, get the proper uh, size for example if i am cutting it in the round shape so i won't get a round shape of particular diameter throughout all vegetable pieces so what happens in homemade cutting is some irregular shaped material will be um, always there so uh, sometimes the slicing and dicing also will be done in irregular shapes not only for particular shapes for irregular shape also so they do uh, slicing and dicing and in terms of fruits the first one is washing so washing is uh, similar to our vegetable washing 
So, uh, normally it, it will be washed in the agitated tank and sprays the water to remove the remaining dirt which is not getting uh, washed away by using uh, normal water washing. Then after that peeling and pitting. Mm, so, there we have seen only peeling, here pitting in the sense uh, to remove the uh, pit is nothing but to remove the core part. For example, in the apple and pear peelers, so we need to remove the core section which has that seed, right. So, uh, core section and skin before halving the uh, fruit. Actually, each fruit has its own uh, requirement of peeling and uh, pitting. For example, stone fruit that is peeled for canning is usually chemically peeled with uh, lye. Uh, we already told right how to peel using uh, the hot lye. So, for stoned fruit, they use hot lye treatment. And uh, stem fruits such as cherries kind of fruits, so they rolled over a set of small rotating rollers which pick the stem and remove the stem and uh, you will get the only cherries. When you get the cherry fruit as a raw, you will get with the stem also. So, then uh, it is sent through the uh, small rotating rollers, so where your stem is removed and your cherries are collected. And uh, this is blanching, blanching is also again a thermal treatment. So, blanching is a heat treatment in a near boiling water or steam for about 60 to 90 seconds for small objects such as green peas or diced carrot or and up to 3 minutes for larger pieces followed by rapid cooling. So, it is done in the steam blanches. So, it is uh, uh, nothing but it is not like up to the sterilizing temperature, it is a near boiling water temperature for about 60 to 90 seconds. Um, why we do that is, um, it is to remove the gases from within the tissue and one more thing is inactivate the undesirable enzymes and softens the product and improve the food quality. So, for these reasons usually blanching is done. The main reason is to remove the gas from within the tissue because if this gas is still happening to be uh, inside the um, tissue, so it promotes the oxidation of the product and also it prevents the excessive can corrosion, right. So, if we remove the gas then it reduces the oxidation of the product and also maintains vacuum in the can. Vacuum in the can in the sense in the canning there is a always a head space to be uh, maintained to avoid the damage of the can uh, during processing. So, if we have the gases still inside, so this occupies this uh, uh, space. So, to avoid that we need to remove the gas. So, it maintains vacuum and also it reduces the oxidation, further oxidation of the process and also it prevents excessive can corrosion. If the gases are left inside, then there may be a room for corrosion. So, that can be avoided using blanching and inactivates enzyme which cause deterioration of the food. If there is a long arm, so uh, it also inactivates the enzyme. For example, uh, we fill the can and we will go for retorting, but in between uh, the filling of the can and retorting, if there is a time lag. So, this, this helps in inactivating the enzymes which, which spoils the food. So, for that uh, purpose also blanching is done. And uh, preparation of juices, all right, we have seen preparation of vegetables. So, what are all the main uh, thermal processing required and what are all the equipments. And uh, after that preparation of the fruits and now preparation of juices. So, normally juices are applied to force the whole or pulped material. So, the major methods extracting juices are to apply a force to the uh, whole or pulped material. Pulped material in the sense uh, remove the skin and uh, only the um, fruit pulp. So, this is usually done in screw press or belt press. So, followed by screening out pulp from the resultant liquid. So, after that we need to remove uh, pulp from the resultant liquid. And usually citrus fruit, they are reamed on a mechanical reamers. So, instead of presses, they get the juices from uh, mechanical reamers or crushed in such a way that uh, to remove the edible portion from the skin. As I already told for vegetables or fruits or juices or whatever the preparation methodology, we cannot keep every food under the same category and say that okay, this particular equipment is used for these particular category. For example, uh, preparation of juices, we would be using only screw press or belt press. So, based on the needs, based on the variety of the food and based on the um, thermal processing requirement, it keeps on changing. And also citrus juices pasteurized, so uh, which is a heat 
treatment of 95 degree centigrade immediately after the extraction to uh, inactivate pectinase. So, uh, as I told uh, for other juices it may not be required for citrus juice. So, after the preparation we usually go for pasteurization thermal processing pasteurization processing of at uh, 95 degree for about the required time. So, um, why it is done is to inactivate pectinase. So, this is the enzyme. So, what it does is the cloud and the juice is held by naturally occurring pectin which when attacked by pectinase allows the juice to separate into clear serum and a solid deposit. So, what is the function of pectinase is? So, it converts the pectin into some other product, so which allows the juice to separate. So, your pulp material will, will be at the bottom, you, you get the clear juice at the top. So, no consumer would be happy to consume such juices. So, to avoid the uh, pectin activity to clarify the juice, so we have to inactivate this pectinase product. But it is true for citrus fruit, citrus fruit should not be separated uh, as a clear serum and the solid deposit. But the same is not true for apple juices, so in kind of apple juices this activity is uh, required uh, to get the clear juice, right. So, there it the activity is required. But in the citrus fruit, the pectinase activity is not required. So, that is the reason we go for pasteurization. So, this is another thermal processing. So, before uh, going for proper sterilization. And meat preparation, meat preparation normally the first thing would be deboning uh, and slaughtering. Then uh, usually it is pre-cooked before filling into the cans uh, meats and meat products cooked with a cure containing salt and nitrate. So, this is nothing but a curing agent. So, this act also act as a antibacterial activity. So, nitrate causes the meat to turn a characteristic pink color during heating and because of its uh, antibacterial activation um, action. So, nitrate salt they call it as a salt curing the salt used is uh, sodium nitrite. So, this uh, causes the, the characteristic pink color to the meat and also this allows before going for uh, heat treatment during retarding. So, this, this process is done. So, the meat is cooked with the either salt or nitrate. So, this lessens the uh, time required for the proper heat treatment uh, during retarding. And uh, fishes such as tuna are cleaned and then steamed to allow for the easy removal of skins and bones. So, um, this is another thermal processing which is done in the steamers. So, uh, they are cleaned and then steamed to allow for easy removal of skins and bones. Then they filled into a machine which shapes and cuts them into can size, um, the cutting and uh, slicing and dicing. So, the fishes are canned with brine or oil or in some cases some formulated sauce also uh, will be used in can itself, the fish can itself. And uh, formulated products, it, it varies from meat stews, uh, dairy desserts and uh, beer, every product is a formulated product. Usually they cooked or blended or brewed uh, before filling into the can. The cooked and the preparation stage uh, are filled into the can hot. So, if you are doing cooking process, cooking process we have seen for the meat as well. So, they cook it with the salt or nitrate and uh, um, fish also steamed to remove the bones. So, if that kind of cooking is done then it should be filled in the uh, can with the hot stage itself. So, normally uh, the carbonated products are filled at temperatures just above the freezing to maintain the carbonation. So, this is important. So, they should be uh, filled at a temperature just above the freezing. And usually uh, the soft drinks which are not uh, canned products we will see in the canning operations why it is not called canned products because they use preservatives to maintain the microbiological stability and uh, we do not go for any particular sterilization process for these kind of canned products. So, then uh, finally, so these are all the pre-processing uh, before going for canning. Uh, one is washing, proper washing and peeling and if there are any uh, certain uh, fruits, if they need pitting, then pitting will be done. Then after that slicing and dicing and uh, then finally, uh, it will come to cans for fill. So, uh, as I told earlier, not all the vegetables, not all the fruits, not all the formulated products will have same protocol to, to prepare for the canning because it, it is based on the product and the um, size, shape, color and in what process you would like to um, uh, employ. So, um, 
everything based on the product size shape and uh, and the process requirement so we cannot uh, generalize okay this is the flow chart to be followed before uh, canning so usually cans are delivered to the factory on pallets so can lines operate between 200 to 2000 cans per minute so usually plastic belts will be of uh, 60 to 70 centimeter wide to transfer the cans so cans are thoroughly washed before period to filling it's not only the food to be washed cans also to be washed and also they use invert mm. they they usually invert cans to remove uh, all the water before filling and uh, usually volumetric piston fillers are used to fill the liquid products and liquid products with entrained solids so volumetric piston fillers will be used and there is a turntable uh, so which has uh, for example here my uh, cans are there so above which there there uh, there is a header so which which fills the uh, product whether if it is a liquid product you will use uh, volumetric piston fillers or if it is a solid product there will be a hooper so this size for example based on the can size there will be a programmable controller so which takes care of how much volume to be filled in each can so usually slow filler might have 12 such heads and while high speed uh, fillers will have up to 72 heads actually uh, what happens in the cans is why why we are doing canning processes uh, canning operations is uh, for particular season any vegetable or fru fruits or uh, the leafy vegetables uh, you will get it at particular season only so the canning is done for e even in the half off season how do i get the same product but to do that so i should be handling large amount of volumes right uh, each particular season i should be harvesting large amount of volume and i should be canning it for the off season so uh, all the equipment should be able to hand large volume so that is the way so from 12 heads to almost 72 heads nowadays industries are using usually tumble fillers are used to fill the solid materials and also sometimes the um, hoopers such as vegetable pieces into the cans excess is removed by tilting and shaking the can at the exit of the filler so if you shake or tilt then the uh, materials which happen to be there in the um, lid uh, then they will be removed and other volumetric fillers wipe the solid uh, products into the uh, packets on the turntable and the products are then dumped by gravity into the can so when the can moves so normally these products will be uh, removed due to gravity action and still uh, as i said there are uh, hand sorters here hand filling is also there and some products are canned with shrub and or brine so we already told the um, fish will be uh, packed with the oil so there is a separate operation for filling the solid food uh, it may takes place before or after filling of the solids so normally if if the solid to be canned with a uh, shrub or brine so normally they do um, they fill separately but it is a good practice to fill the syrup first then go for the solid material because uh, it will uh, remove the unnecessary air packets between the solid material so the head space uh, must be left in the top of the can uh, um, after filling so this is very much important i already told otherwise it will damage the can so this process is called exhausting so exhausting is nothing but to keep the head space in the vacuum condition and the clinching is the operation so what they do is we are going to see in the canning operations there is something called seaming double seaming they call it as so this is my canning flange so they put the lid of something of this kind so this is nothing but my uh, uh, can flange so this is the lid so the clinching is nothing but so the lid will be loosely uh, kept in the can right uh, so the um, first operation seaming roll which holds the lid loosely on the can they just kept it and they did not uh, seal okay so the exhausting is carried out by passing this filled cans which is at clinching uh, operation now with the clinched lids through the steam filled compartment for several minutes to heat the can contents and displace the air of air in the can with the steam so normally this loosely clenched lids contained cans would be processed in the steam filled compartment to remove the air inside the can and to fill with the uh, steam right uh, then after this is done then they seam the lid with the can flange sometimes mechanical vacuum pumps also used to remove the air bubbles uh, in the head space 
and acid products such as fruit juices, jams, pickles and chutneys may be filled with the can at the near boiling temperatures. So, displacement of air by steam in the hot product itself. So, one way to do exhausting is you prepare the canned products and put the lid loosely and send it through the uh, steam filled compartment and fill the steam or otherwise you use uh, mechanical vacuum pumps to remove the air or sometimes when you fill the product with the near boiling temperature. So, that creates the steam. So, that removes the air in the head space and when condensation happens, so that become vacuum, uh, that head space become vacuum. So, the uh, seaming uh, as I already told, uh, then after once it is done, uh, once the removing of air in the head space is done, then finally, seaming will be done. The seaming rollers then roll around the seam to form the seal. The rollers retract, the base plate is lowered and then actually normally what happens is this is the seamer uh, equipment. So, normally this base plate will go here. So, then the reamer will act on the can and it, it seams it does the seaming process, seaming process is nothing but closing the can airtight. Then after that this will become uh, lower, the base plate will become lowered, then uh, the closed can exists from the closer. The first operation roller bends the two flanges together as I told, so this is the uh, lid and uh, this is the can flange. So, this becomes, uh, so final would be something like this. So, in between two this thing your can uh, uh, flange will be held. So, it is a full seaming operation. The second operation roller flattens them to form a seal. So, flattens in the sense, so you cannot differentiate between the can flange and the lid. So, closes with 4 to 6 stations are common, the, the closing operations also can be done in 6 or more stations. So, the post processing operations is after finishing everything, so they are wet with chlorinated water and must be dried before they are uh, handled safely and labeling would be done after the canning process and sometimes what happens the can itself lithographed the already before processing itself, so they do not require the labeling. So, after that it will go to market or the further uh, operation. So, uh, these are all the operations normally uh, held before uh, sterilization or pasteurization. So, all these process also contain some of the thermal processing. So, that is what we have done. The major thermal processing are one is the steam filled compartment we do exhausting. So, that is there and another one is blanching. Blanching operation is also thermal processing and during peeling we use uh, the high steam operation to peel the vegetable that is also another thermal processing operations. So, so, the major uh, thermal processing equipment are batch sterilizers. So, they are uh, further divided into still retorts, rotary batch retorts, uh, crateless retorts and retorts with glass and flexible containers. So, this is a special case. Usually, they have a one hinged large uh, um, top cover which can be closed hermetically that is air tight. during processing. So, this is a batch sterilizer. So, you need to put it and forget it uh, means the batch process no continuous flow is happening. So, as we told already the piping walls instruments uh, specified by regulations and technical publications for the canning industry which is uh, formulated by NFPA. So, that is National Food uh, Processes Association and construction based on ASME code, uh, American Society of Mechanical Engineers course. So, that should be followed in the uh, unfired pressure vessels. So, we can say that batch process in the sense even um, just one jacketed vessel is enough to sterilize. No, it is not like that. So, whatever the equipment you use, so that should be um, based on the regulations uh, and standards. And also for pressure vessels because in sterilization you use 121 degree uh, and particular temperature and higher pressure. So, in that case the pressure vessels also should follow the ASME code. The sterilizers are kept in cook room, mm, right? there is a special room in, the, uh, in every industry and must comply with the regulations of the public health authorities, it cannot be just like that uh, kept. And also when we do the sterilization process, it is basically for killing of microorganisms. Right. So, finally, when the um, uh, food is checked for its microbial activity also, uh, it should be done on the organism which is not toxic enough. So, in that way, so all the regulations of the public uh, health authorities should be taken into account and good manufacturing practices, GMPs always should be followed. 
and close supervision is must. And still retards normally uh, use steam of 6 bars is introduced to the steam spreaders which is the perforated pipes located in the bottom and vents which are the valves for removing air from the retard and always placed opposite to the steam spreader. Anyway, we are going to see how it looks like usually at the top of the retards and bleeders, bleeders are just for the steam to escape. So, they should be placed on the top and near the instrument wells um, for letting small amount of steam to escape continuously to the atmosphere during thermal processing and air piping valving are also required for air over pressure processing. And uh, retard temperature should be measured with the mercury thermometer, a pressure gauge and a pressure relief wall also should be required and thermocouples are also used in temperature recording and control. So, these are all the parts of the still retards we need to be bit careful about and it should comply with all the standards. So, this, this is how the still retards looks like. So, this is vertical retard, so this is horizontal retard. So, there is no standard, but still uh, it is of 1.5 meter diameter and 2.5 meter length and uh, the uh, horizontal retard is of 2.5 meter diameter and 10 meter length. So, this is the uh, hinged top. So, once the um, uh, can is uh, kept inside, uh, so this is the crate, uh, right. So, this is this is crate and these are all the products kept in the crates and uh, this is steam, so which is nothing but a perforated pipe. So, through which steam is employed and once they keep the can then the, this uh, top will be hermetically sealed. Then this is the bottom perforated place through which steam is uh, employing inside the retort and this is the steam bleeder. So, this is air for over pressure. Uh, for example, uh, you do sterilization at 121 degree centigrade and higher pressure, right. So, immediately the product to be cooled to uh, normal temperature of around 38 degree centigrade. But uh, why we do so is because to um, avoid any thermophilic bacteria to survive, right. So, uh, when, when you cool the product which is at high temperature and uh, high pressure, there may be internal stresses caused due to pressure. So, your outside pressure should be balanced. So, that is nothing but a uh, over pressure riding. So, the, for that purpose air is also employed here. And so, this is nothing but temperature control, the thermocouple, T is thermocouple, BL is bleeder and A is uh, air. And after the sterilization at particular temperature is done, particular temperature for particular time is done, then cooling water, CW is cooling water, this is employed uh, by bottom and it is uh, removed in the top. And this is the vent, uh, this is again bleeder, yeah that is all. So, this is the pressure catch uh, to check the pressure. And um, here uh, everything is uh, similar in the horizontal. So, uh, here it is your steam uh, which is employed and sometimes what happens is this door is, uh, this also uh, will have a hinged top door. It is not hinged, hinged right door, right? It is not top. Anyway, hinged door, uh, there is uh, another door here. So, they, uh, they keep inside the can and the can will be removed for further operation. So, that kind of design is also available. The same way, uh, this is the drain, uh, this is the drain, this is cooling water inside and this is the drain and this is the steam. So, this is bleeder, this is vent again, um, yeah, that is all. So, this is two type of retards batch retards. So, crates, so we have already discussed and the sterilized cans are cooled in the retort using cold water which is introduced through the pipe at the bottom when it is vertical retort. Two hinged doors also used uh, which should be closed hermetically. Normally, uh, the number of cans, how do they decide or number of uh, or the diameter and length of the retards, how do they decide is based on the can size. So, this is um, nothing but external diameter and height. So, this is external diameter, this is height. So, normally it is 3 inch and uh, 16th of an inch. So, 3 inch 7 upon 16 inch. So, that is nothing but 3 not 7, 4 not 9 is 4 inch 
and 9 upon 16 inch. So, that is the uh, this is uh, diameter external diameter outer diameter. So, this is nothing but a height. So, this uh, holds 480 ml. So, normally because this size is standardized they call this as a number 2 can. Number 2 can means which has 3 and 7 upon 16 inch OD and 4 9 upon 16 inch height can which has the 480 ml volume. And the same way uh, 603 and 700 which holds uh, 3108 ml and this is called number 10 can. So, based on the sizes of the can, we can decide how many cans can be kept inside the retard. So, horizontal retard we already have seen the placed in a trucks or trolleys which are loading into the retards moving on special trucks. So, if you see here, so this is what they talk about and the steam is introduced into the retard through the long perforated pipe which is at the bottom and venting and bleeding valves are also located in the top. Cooling water is in, um, introduced normally from the top and removed from the bottom in the horizontal retards. And uh, cooling of large and flat cans with water requires overriding of air pressure to prevent the bulging. I already told if you are processing the pouch or the glass uh, cans then there may be a chance of bulging and the lid will be thrown out. And if it is a pouch and there is a uh, large possibility for the pouches to break. So, to balance the pressure or to avoid the mechanical distortion the excessive internal uh, or to avoid the excessive internal pressure particularly during initial stage of cooling. I already told it is at high pressure and high temperature when the start of cooling. So, we need to take care of the pressure balance between the inside and the uh, outside of the can. So, for that normally overriding air pressure is, is done. Uh, that is why that air walls are used. So, next one is the batch rotary retards. I have already told the rotary action is done just to increase the heat transfer rate uh, by uh, axial rotation and there are uh, certain categories for example, uh, this is my can. So, you do uh, axial rotation and also can can be rotated in this way also right. So, normally this has less comparatively this is high. The heat transfer rate is still high in the Mm, uh, one on one rotation. So, this is axial rotation. So, comparative to that this is uh, mm, this is uh, having less heat transfer rate. The rotary units um, usually particularly effective for larger cans uh, which contains the difficult to heat food. Difficult to heat food in the sense cream style corn starch soup. So, they their viscosity is high. So, normally the heat transfer coefficient would be less to increase that then normally the agitation is done. It improves the mixing and also it increases the heat transfer rate. So, end, end over end is this, this one. So, this is comparatively high compared to axial rotation. And they, uh, there is something called crateless retards. The crateless retards what, what happens is initially it is filled with the uh, preheated water. Then after that cans are just put inside through the uh, top opening. Then uh, slowly the steam is employed. The steam uh, replaces the preheated water. Then once the sterilization is done for particular time then uh, cooling water is employed. Then cooling water is removed here. Then cans are um, sterilized. Uh, usually glass and flexible containers I have already told when you do thermal processing there may be a um, overriding air pressure to prevent the pop up or rejection of the glass lids or breakage of the glass or flexible packages by the internal pressure developed during processing. So, special arrangements of air piping and walls are done uh, these kind of um, there is nothing like uh, we have special kind of retards for these kind of um, cans of glass or flexible uh, pack pouches and only thing we need to take care of um, take is overriding of pressure that is done in extra air piping and walls. Uh, apart from that the industry adopts the new range of retards so which is nothing but a rotary cooker or coolers. So, this is done for high production rate, lower operating cost, better process controlled, improved food quality. So, all, all this purpose instead of doing it in the batch process you do it in a uh, better manner right. So, here um, there are two uh, separate retards one is cooker another one is cooler. The cooker um, we have a rotating spiral reel mechanism. So, this is the uh, uh, mechanism followed the ream, uh, ream is nothing but what you uh, take it out uh, your thread right. So, this is wounded and and it, we take it out right. So, this kind of rotating um, reel mechanism is used inside. So, the cans are in here 
So, this is nothing but a pressure locus which is used to move the can through the spiral reel mechanism till the end and the same pressure lockers are used to transfer the cans from the cooker section to the cooler section. So, where cooler section cooling water is employed to cool the cans, then the cans are out here. So, this is done for high production rate. So, instead of uh, putting 30 cans inside the batch retards and wait for 30 minutes and this is a continuous process and also it, it takes care of lower operating cost. Lower operating cost in the sense we can uh, process more cans in at a same time and also it gives the better process control and improved fruit product quality because when you are rotating here. So, I, we already told the heat transfer rate is improved and also the mixing is pro proper, you would not get uh, more cold spots uh, compared to uh, non-rotating one. And there is something called hydrostatic sterilizer, this is also a uh, new version. So, here what happens is the different regions are there, one is hydrostatic come up feed leg. So, this is come up in the sense here the hot water is there, here it is cold water. So, before going into uh, steam sterilizing, so it is preheated in the hot water. So, that is nothing but a come up feed leg, then sterilizing chamber which is nothing but this one and hydrostatic discharge leg, this is again coming into hot water, then after that it is going to cooling section. So, uh, it is not like you are not transferring from the high temperature high pressure to sudden cooling. So, before doing that you, it is processing through hot water again. So, usually these kind of hydrostatic sterilizer we already told the when you are doing the uh, sterilization it is a high temperature high pressure process to counterbalance the pressure the hydrostatic in the sense rho gh right. So, your height should be so high to maintain at high pressure. So, in that case the um, height of this unit would be around uh, around 12 meter length. So, it should be kept outside the industry unit and it is not completely outside the industry unit. So, you need to find the proper place because uh, 12 meter height of this unit uh, it is it, we cannot uh, accommodate in the normal plant. Um, so, this kind of sterilizer is also available. And another is circulating water and steam sterilizer. So, this is um, what we have seen the same uh, container sterilizer. So, this is the crate and um, this is the bleeder and steam and everything is there, but here the crates is kept rotating. Right. And here another mechanism where uh, your uh, fan is used to uh, um, forced convection, uh, forced convection fan is used to for forced convection. So, when the steam is applied through the perforated plates, so the fan is used to distribute the steam uh, evenly within the sterilizer. So, these are all uh, special types of thermal processing sterilizers and another is uh, nothing but track flow sterilizer. Uh, so, here uh, you have a serpentine piping. So, this is the um, proper line. So, this serpentine uh, pipe is nothing but this, so which has the rectangular uh, cross section. So, your can is kept inside, right. So, when it goes and the uh, rotation happens in this way, right. So, here you have a lock chamber which takes care of the pressure differences. When cans are in, it is employed through the um, serpentine pipe. So, where um, your hot water is employed, right. So, the hot water if you see here, the hot water as well as cans, right. So, both are going inside the pipe of rectangular cross section here. So, if you see this is my can and this is the hot water filled. So, here your steam is passing. So, the steam is heating the hot water here. So, that is the way the cans are being sterilized. This is the hot water loop and this the cans are in. So, when they are passing through the serpentine piping, so the steam is employed uh, here and that is the way your water gets heated and it, the cans are sterilized. Then after that it is removed here and the cold water pump employs the cold water. The same thing happening in the cooling loop, then finally your cans are out and uh, can and hot water separations is done here. So, this is nothing but track flow sterilizer. And uh, continuous flow sterilizers normally we are going to see anyway the milk pasteurization. So, there uh, you will see the thermal processing equipment used to for UHT. So, UHT is uh, employed for uh, the aseptic packaging which is mainly used to sterilize low viscosity fluid uh, foods like milk or fruit juices. It is also applied to viscous foods while application to particulate foods is under development. Usually, 
the pure milk, pure liquid products, it is well developed UHT process, but particulate foods which are in two phase, which are in suspension in the liquid, the solid materials are suspended in the liquid. So, this is under development. Uh, usually, these uh, URT sterilized food are packaged in consumer containers, usually the laminated cartons of various sizes. So, there are 7 layers of packaging. Uh, usually, the commercial size of packaging of 55 US gallons that is nothing but 208 liters or larger is also available. The packaged products can be stored up in ambient temperature for several months and sometimes up to 2 years. So, this is the beauty of UHT. So, normal pasteurization you cannot uh, keep it in the atmosphere temperature, you should be um, refrigerating it to avoid further contamination. But uh, in UHT, so you can store it in the normal temperature up to several months to up to 2 years. So, based on the time temperature relation you apply for sterilization. So, this is one such table which talks about temperature and time relation. So, in UHT process if it is acid food of less than 4.5, so you use 93 to 96 degree for 15 seconds and if it is a low acid food um, pH of greater than 4.5, we use um, 130 to 149 degree centigrade about 1, 1 second. So, milk US UK. So, this why we are telling US UK is uh, what is the difference is that we, we are going to see in milk pasteurization lecture because US and UK use different different regulations to uh, kill the microorganisms at particular uh, time temperature relation. So, that is what uh, that is why this is US UK. So, US standard says 138 degree centigrade and uh, 2 second is enough, but UK regulation the T should be greater than 135 degree uh, uh, time should be greater than 1 second because they take care of to keep good enzymes as well um, at the same time inactivating the enzymes which spoils the milk. And for flavored milks, uh, UK standard says greater than 140 degree centigrade and uh, about 2 seconds. So, this is common UHT sterilizer which is going to use by uh, direct heating, direct heating in the sense your steam is employed in the product itself. So, this is the fluid feed, uh, so which is pumped, uh, so normally they use positive displacement pump. So, because uh, irrespective of the pressure, uh, it takes care of uh, the particular speed of the material. So, that is why plus positive displacement pumps are preferred over uh, uh, centrifugal pumps and there are uh, certain industry which uses centrifugal pumps as well. The fluid uh, feed is uh, pumped through and it is going to uh, regeneration section. So, this whole unit is nothing but heat exchanger. So, this is the heat exchanger either it can be a tubular or it will be a plate heat exchanger there is other variety of heat exchangers also there. So, this is the fluid which is pumped and it is going through the regeneration section then after that it comes to heat this is the hot water. So, this is proper heating then it goes to steam section where steam is employed here only your sterilization happens. Right. It is raised to 121 degree or uh, whatever. For example, if you are processing an acid food, so it is heated to 93 to 96 degree uh, and it, it is holding in the holding tube around uh, 15 second. Then after that it comes to flash tank where excess water is removed. Why we are uh, removing the excess water, I will be telling. So, then uh, again it goes to regeneration section to uh, exchange its high heat with the raw feed. This is the raw feed. So, it exchanges the heat with the raw feed, right. So, then it goes to cooling water section where cooling water is employed to cool the product. Then again it goes to through the pressure wall, back pressure wall for the further aseptic packaging. So, your raw feed is come pumped and coming to the regeneration section, then heated using hot water, then goes to sterilization where steam is employed to uh, reach the required temperature and holding it for particular seconds to um, maintain that temperature then comes to flash tank where the excess water is removed then goes to regeneration section to exchange heat with the raw feed then go to cooling section by using cooling water the um, product gets cooled then go to pre, um, through pressure wall it goes for aseptic packaging. So, here you are you saying direct heating. So, the steam is employed to heat the product directly. So, when condensation happens there may be some water which is also present in the product. So, that can be separated in the flash tank. So, that is why we use flash tank here. 
So, then pasteurization process for liquid food um, of if it is a milk grade of A then 63 at 30 minute or 77 degree at 15 seconds. If it is a milk, uh, I already told the milk standard of UK 63 at 30 minute or 72 at 15 second. This is low temperature high time, this is high temperature low time. Fruit juices normally 85 degree and 15 seconds, liquid eggs uh, 60 degree 3.5 minute, liquid eggs of UK standard 64.4 and 2.5 minute, for beer 65 degree and 20 minute. So, this is uh, certain uh, time temperature combinations for the food based on different countries. Uh, apart from that, uh, we have told the direct heating, indirect heating only the heat exchanger comes. The uh, heat exchanger I already told play type heat exchangers are mostly used, tubular heat exchangers used for uh, high viscous food or particularly if we have solids in the liquid. And uh, apart from uh, recent sterilizer, I forgot to mention the flame sterilizer. So, flame sterilizer normally used um, for the food which has uh, high viscosity because the flame sterilizers uses almost 1200 to uh, 1400 degree centigrade gases which comes out of the combustions to heat the um, product instead of the steam. All right, and there are uh, many recent versions of the sterilizer. So, you may uh, refer some other books to get to know the recent sterilizers which are used in the industry. I have discussed only few thermal processing equipment. As we have seen already, there are large varieties of thermal processing equipment based on the needs and uh, the safety concerns to be followed in the particular thermal processing. So, here are the references and additional resources. So, I refer more uh, books for different heat exchanges and other thermal processing equipments. Thank you.